Okay, so what I said might happen if we keep going on that thumb and removing the cord, see it? It's wiggling on me. So that kind of sucks because it was kind of cool. It added to the character, but I think I'll stop now and just I'll remove like a little bit of this dead quartz in there a little bit, but and try and stabilize the quartz so that this doesn't fall off. But uh, about a 50 50 chance that during the next etching processes that's gonna fall off. So I'm just letting you know it. Um, that's just part of etching. So sorry. Um, but yeah, you can see, see it move. It's barely hanging on by some gold attached there. But that's, it's just how it formed. So sorry if that's bad news. I know, you know, the piece looked cool, kind of like a glove or a shark or whatever we we're calling it. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to work on this side, but I just wanted to show you that because yeah, you keep, you keep working on these and working on these. You don't know what's underneath and then boom, there it is. And it's real fragile. Um, and that's just the quartz that was holding those two pieces together with just a little bit of gold connecting there. So, um, just letting you know that so that you're not disappointed. Oh, f there it went. Okay. So now you have two pieces. I guess I'm glad it happened on video. I think what I love about this YouTube channel is I never know from one week to the next what's going to be posted, what kind of video I'm going to make. I think if it's loosely tied to gold, then it's okay. The gold vlog, that's kind of a loose thing. Uh, this week, truthfully, the video that I just showed you, that little intro, that was shot with my phone. That was never supposed to be public. It was never going to be on YouTube, but it had kind of a moment there with me and... Uh, uh, the people that I showed it to said, Mike, you, you should really make that into a video. It's, it's pretty funny. Um, and I agree. It's funny, not funny at the time. And I dreaded sending that video off to the gentleman. It was intended for the prospector that found this piece of gold, but those videos are very important. And every time I'm etching a piece of gold for someone and that gold doesn't belong to me necessarily, I document it as well as I can. And show them the progress and the steps just so it's all documented on the up and up and so they get to be a part of the experience this is a a really cool piece for this prospector and i get to show you him finding it and his reaction and it's a really cool story give me a few minutes and we'll get to that but this piece and i have a have a recent history together so if you're a fan of the vlog and you've watched previous episodes, a couple months ago, I was in Arizona. I shot two videos in two days down there. The first video was running around Tucson, grabbing some tools, and then heading to this prospector's house to look at his gold collection, talk about purchasing some of it or consigning some of it. We were just talking gold and looking at gold. And this piece was sitting on the table. It looked substantially different than it does now it's kind of what we call a big ugly meaning it's big it's beautiful because it's gold but it's kind of it's kind of ugly uh and, and it's true value with all that quartz and the quartz wasn't even really pretty it was different colors with the reds and the browns and the blacks and so this prospector now a friend of mine asked if i would etch this piece of gold so certainly i said i would etch it for him and that's been a progression over the last few months. First thing I want to talk about is this etching process. How did I get to that point where it's barely hanging on and it's going to fall off? Well, as this piece progressed along, we just kept getting further and further into the quartz and removing more and more of the quartz. And the prospector and I both agreed, let's keep looking for the gold. Let's, let's get to the bottom of that thumb and see that piece of gold sticking out and 
it just kept getting more and more quartz. And then I finally get down to this point where it starts moving on me and I realize there's not enough gold there. It's not a very strong vein that's sticking out that end. And it, it fell off. So that was the, uh, that was the intro. Still a great piece. It's uh, 17 troy ounces, which his specific gravity test when he first did it, he thought there was 15 troy ounces. And the second vlog I shot with it in Arizona was with Mike Vendetta and he and I did a collaboration video. And at the end of that, I had this in my backpack hanging out with him all day. It was the only piece of gold I took with me from the prospector because I told him I'm not taking any gold from you today just because I'm going to be going and shooting a vlog. I'm going to have all my camera quit. And the last thing I want to worry about is a bunch of gold in my backpack. But I did take this piece with me and got to show it to, to Mike Vendetta when we had lunch that day. And uh, I think he was pretty impressed with it as well, especially because it came from Arizona. And Mike is always joking that there's no gold in Arizona. And that brings me maybe to the, the next point in the video. Where was this found? Where's, where's the gold? So this gold nugget was found 100 miles from the boot of Cortez. Now the boot of Cortez is the largest gold nugget in existence that was ever found in the Western Hemisphere, North America and South America. It's 389 troy ounces, it was found in 1989. Here's a photo of my business partner who got to hold it. This was like 12 years ago in Tucson. It was on display down there to show. It sold at auction for $1.5 million. At the time, that was about six times spot price of gold. And this was found 100 miles from there. So, Mike, you got to go south, brother. You got to go south. Pima County is still rich with gold. If you move a little bit further south, south of Tucson into the Sonora Desert between the Mexico border and Tucson is, uh, is some pretty rich areas still. And that's all I can say. I was sworn to secrecy, but I can say that Pima County Pima County is loaded with gold. In fact, the nugget that was also sitting on that table next to this one that night with the prospector, we think is the largest gold nugget to ever be found in Arizona. It's over 60 troy ounces. And that maybe brings me to the third point, equipment matters. And the recent technology developments with metal detectors have been game changers, specifically the GPC 7000 and now the GPC 6000. And those two metal detectors now are pinging gold much deeper than any other metal detector has in the past. Case in point, this gold nugget was found under about three feet of dirt and two massive boulders. Now it's a, it's a big piece, 17 troy ounces but he was getting a signal three feet down underneath two boulders. And let me just show you that. Here I am. About a foot and a half deep. And my target centered up. Big ass boulder. And I just moved this big old boulder right here. That thing is huge. Another couple of Wilboro loads. Nineteen inch coil. Take some deep ass targets. Probably a big old can. got done digging that hole. Flip that big old boulder over. That thing is deep. What came out of that hole? A massive beast of a nugget. heavier than shit. Huh. 
Man, that was worth it. So I certainly agree it was worth the effort to not give up on that ping from his metal detector, move those two massive boulders, and uncover this beautiful gold nugget. This one's going back to the prospector. It's part of his private collection, but we do have a number of his gold nuggets on our website now, both at goldnuggetsales.com and goldnuggetsforsale.com. And I have a feeling we'll be getting even more as he continues to uncover gold in Southern Arizona. So that's going to do it for this episode. Appreciate you watching. As always, be well, be safe, and we will see you in the next episode.